Hello and welcome back to episode 8 of my tutorial series for Songs of Six. I'm Icon and today we're going to establish ourselves our own metal production. Alongside with that, I hope that I'd be able to get myself some alcohol production running alongside of that, but I don't want to promise anything that I can't keep. We'll have to see how our development will flow and how things are going to be here in the future. So, the last couple of episodes we were expanding quite swimmingly. Our buildings here are way larger than we need them right now, and we can expand all these industries as we will have more people living in the city here. That's a good start, but that's hardly where we can stop for now. Building or making your own metal is just a logical next step. And ha as has been mentioned in the comment section a while ago, some people even take this as the very first refining that they do in their city. I take that as a very viable and um, smart beelining choice because, you know, metal is extremely costly and metal is necessary quite everywhere. But let's just pick up these technologies here. And before we keep talking, let's start smelting. So we're going to get ourselves some ore here, and we don't have any crates allocated for that. So let's change that next. So we got 80 of 110 now. These warehouses always quick, uh, built way too quickly. That's one thing I can't tell. So we're going to get ourselves, like... A uh, amount of five uh, ore crates. For now, we're going to import 20%. So, there we go. This will take a while until we get access uh, from, to enough money to get that ore going, but that's just okay. In between that time, let's think about the question where will be our um, smelter going, uh, where's or where our smelter is going to be. So one day in the not so far future, we'll build quarries into the mountain here. So this area here will be ultimately used for our stone production. We got the warehouse here pretty much in the center of this district pretty neat and nice. There's two things that I see as a good possibility here. One, I'll just raise that fruit farm and use that place. Two, we're going into this area here and go and start smelting there, but honestly I like raising the fruit farm way more. Mostly because we right now don't need this building too badly and it's binding six people. We have such a massive overproduction of food here going on that I have a good feeling about just using that space for something else which we need way more. So one thing that I just noticed because I uh, was hovering over the graveyard, I missed mentioning one important thing about the graveyard. The graveyard has a limited amount of slots as you might have already noticed. These slots are read up in the course of the time so the dead people decay and therefore, there's, uh, the, those slots are not permanently uh, blocked by, by people dying. It's very important to know, and I just wanted to mention that in between. I guess I will mention that also when we're uh, going to build more, um, more graveyards and more crypts, but I just wanted to shove that in between. So we're going to build that out of stone, you know, that's, that's just the same. Would anybody here build a smelter out of wood? The building for a smelter? Sounds like a really, really stupid idea to me. All right, so we we are building it up for five employees yet again. I like this number because it's an easily uh, fulfillable number and it has room for lots of expansions. Although I must, uh, I must say it here uh, clearly. These buildings are, in terms of late game aspects, small. These are small workshops. You can, you can and will build way larger things along, along the game, because at some point it's just way easier you know, to have just one building allocated to all that. But for now, I'd say these sizes are quite cool. And that's another thing: how large your buildings are and how they look like 
it's up to you. You can also build irregular shapes with that editor. You don't need to build those uh, regular shapes like I do it all the time. I can show it to you in another, in another building. I just didn't want to stress it out uh, because I found the... I thought the building editor was one of the most complicated things when I started out playing this game, so I wanted to keep the features as basic as possible when I introduced them. That was just my thought process. Now, we got 10 odd jobbers on this, so work's getting done quite quickly. The only thing that's bothering me a tad bit is that our income is so bad, but what can I do? The exports of fabric and leather are just not kicking it that well. I mean, there's one thing that I could do. I could just uh, build up another hunter somewhere out there and get myself some more income of that. I'm really considering that because it's a very easy way of getting yourself some early game money. In the comment section of the last episode was one that I wanted to mention here as well. Somebody mentioned that uh, he was selling off slaves for money. So that's another cool thing. If you are arresting your convicts, you can sell them off as slaves to slavers. Also a pretty decent way of earning money because I can tell you slaves are quite profitable. It is as it is. And you're just selling off your criminals. Or, well, there are other options, but I don't want to dive into these things right now. Oh, and another thing that was worth mentioning in the com between the comments in between. I built up this mass grave here, and I was talking about that these things can be useful later down the road when you're being raided. But it's very important to note that this is way too small for larger scale attacks. You need to have enough room in the mass grave at the end of the day. Otherwise, you'll be running out of burial spots, and that's always a bad thing. Never run out of burial spots in Songs of Six. It's just a golden rule. Always have more room, always have more burial space than you possibly need. And your people will thank you. Well, thank you, and they won't revolt. So let's check out our service panel, because I want to have some more people here working. So I'd say the time has come for a new stage. We are at 50% uh, satisfaction. That sounds to me like there's a really good chance that we're going to have a doubled import or that there will be more than four people coming on in in response to that. So let's put up a stage over here. This will bind four people again, but you know, Services are extremely important, and while we're at it, people weren't asking for a hearth here specifically, but this is something I'm doing here now, really just for the safety of my people. Because I know that during the winter, sometimes people can freeze to death. Usually you can mitigate that if you have enough clothing on your uh, city and the like, but on the other hand, it is a requested service building, and I think... If we have a hearth here, another one over here is just a fitting thing. Okay, well, money is slowly trickling in. That's a good sign. That's really, really a good sign. So... Well, let's just employ one potter for now. This place here, the canteen, doesn't even consume any pottery. But the problem is you need some pottery for the janitors to, uh, to repair the place. Therefore, you will always need a certain amount of these materials. My biggest challenge here right now is that my wallet has a hard time spending for ore and for clay at the same time. Therefore, I'm just turning off my clay imports for a moment, because the smelter is, for me, the more a way more important business compared to the pottery. I just wanted to have that, have that pottery going for later stages of the game, and mostly to build up that canteen. And therefore, well, worked out well. Let's spend our resources other, uh, somewhere else. This is something 
this game does so often. In Songs of Six, I'm constantly juggling my resources for for a certain uh, focus because I need something of that more or and something of that more, and most of the time, I don't have the necessary workforce to get everything done in the way that I want to get it done. So, I love this about the game, though. Don't get me wrong about that. So we're, of course, not going to employ anybody at the smelter as long as we don't have any ore. That would make no sense. So this is yet just a very, very similar industry, and you might already notice that those industries, they all work quite the same. The big issue here that you will be running into in the later stages of the game is that you are ought to optimize the logistics. Right now, I'm already working my part on that. You know, the warehouse in the center of these workshops makes the pathways a lot shorter. There are a couple of things that aren't as ideal. The long path between the cotton farm and the weaver, for example. But I already mitigated that as good as I uh, could. But, you know, the cotton's being produced here, transported into the warehouse here, and transported then into the weaver here. That's not optimal. Wherever you can, just check out that you optimize these paths as hard as you can because you will benefit from that your people get more and more productive the more effective you build these things and since population in the early game is a very limited resource you do well in optimizing your your usage of your population so to say okay but we're doing just fine now we're merely waiting for the first import of ore coming on in, so let's see what the fast forwarding of time will do for us. We are gaining the necessary uh, people that I was hoping for, so we invested four people and got back five. Profit. <laughs> we already succeeded. So, let's see. We've got to wait for that ore, but... Our economy is slowly making profits. That's a good thing. You can, of course, uh, tweak that a lot harder than I do it here. I gotta admit, whenever I play tutorial runs, I feel like I'm playing like a potato. Because between all those explanations, I do so many decisions that I personally don't find ideal from my... As in, from my personal standpoint, when I'm playing regularly, but... Well... You're explaining that much i guess so well we've spent a lot of money so by the way trade whenever you ordered something it takes a while until it actually reaches your place you can check out the world map and we've never looked at this so far you can also check out the trade caravans moving on the world map or right now i'm not finding any of these but as I once found one of these, but here, there they are. So, bound for Ameria. As you can see here, these uh, caravans are actually traveling across the world. And when you're ordering something, one of these caravans is setting off for your city. So, they, they'll bring you what you've ordered. Just wanted to show you here uh, how these things actually do work. Er... Uh, All right. With the own production of metal, our city is pretty much at the point where I would say we're almost finished with the basic setup. We're still lacking a steady income of stone, which is pretty harsh, though, to pull off population-wise. So we're going to, to start our preparations here while we're waiting for the ore to come on in. So you can here select dig into mountain and since there is a huge stone deposit here we're going to have to do this like that and our people here will have to re-up all that stuff. This is a really nice long-term chore for your uh, odd jobbers keeping them busy you know while you're waiting for stuff to get done. Hey look at that first import of ore. So from that point on now we are basically able to fulfill all our needs by ourselves. 
So the next step after that is of course considering how can we increase our population further. It's always the same. So when we check out the services uh, tab, you you can still see that people always prefer those apartments, but the sleeping services business is really is really really well uh, well fulfilled. What what's not so well fulfilled is the hygiene services, and that's where we're going to step on in today as well. We're not going to make alcohol now. I'll need to pump up my grain production for that, and I don't have the necessary workforce for that. But, since we're producing our own metal now, bathhouses are a lot easier, because we can now build our own cut stone. So let's start with that. And, uh, you, you see those little freckles there? That's when your buildings start to get degradation. If that's the case, usually your janitors have more work on their hands than they can uh, stem. Usually that's a uh, sign that you need to amp up the local uh, janitor number by one. That usually works out quite decent for me. So, let's do this. Usually my episodes are a little bit better structurized, but I wasn't sure what I'd be uh, able to do after finishing the metal smelting part. But now that I think more closely about it, the stone cutting is, is an excellent uh, venue to go for. Because cut stone is the last material that we're missing in our, in our economy. So right now I'm setting up a couple of dirt roads here to make sure that we have some nice uh, infrastructure around there. And I'm going to set up a stone cutter here. We're going to later, later we're going to extract stone there, and then there's going to be the stone cutter. Let's see, technology wise, I'm not sure anymore. I think we had to research that first masonry. I think that was the one that we were looking for. Masonry workshop that turns stone into cut stone. This is a pretty costly thing. You're transform. You'll need furniture and metal for that one. That's why I wanted to create metal first, so I definitely would not run into any issues ever again in terms of material fulfillment and repairs and the like. There we go. Of course, this works best if you have a stone mine already up and running in your vicinity there. But since we're we don't have that yet, you can also use the the collected stones from the uh, from the floor, no problem. But always be aware of the fact that you will run out of stone eventually. Your your map does not have an endless supply of stone for you. Not gonna happen. But you can definitely extract an endless amount of stone out of these deposits, but you can't extract it from above the ground endlessly. All right, so we're going to need more metal than we actually got right now, but since our smelters are working now, no biggie. Okay, so that is basically the last step that we were needing before we were before we're going into before we're actually leaving the, the very, very early game and slowly transitioning into the mid game. So the next thing that I want to set up are the bathhouses. Um, I just need to find them in the tech tree here. Bathhouses need cut stone and without cut stone, ah, here. Whew, that's pretty far down the road. They reorganized that, okay. I wasn't aware of that. So this means we need to tech up first. As you see here, we're definitely not able to get this done because we don't have enough tech points for that. So our research points are not sufficient for that. Our library is right now just consuming 10 scrolls. Our paper maker is producing 22 scrolls, so there's going to be no problem whatsoever to just double up 
the production of our library and get that rolling. But I'll be not doing this while we have this building here in progress. As a matter of fact, we're just going to copy the library. You might ask yourself, why the hell am I doing this? There's a quite easy reason behind that. I don't want to have this library run... Um, I don't want to have this library offline because knowledge will decay. And if I'd be assigning now my dudes to build new stuff inside that library, my researchers weren't able to work inside there anymore. Knowledge would degrade, and at this point right now, I'm not sure how quickly they will finish the library. I'm really not sure about that. Therefore, I just want to be say, rather safe than sorry, and uh, just have a second library. There's no problem. And once we want to expand this one, we're just going to turn one of them offline, and the knowledge decay doesn't hit you that hard. It's not the end of the world to lose a technology here and there. It's not even a horrible thing or so, but I personally don't like it when it happens, and I try to avoid these things as much as I can, and a second library has so far worked out really well to get the... to, to avoid this uh, knowledge decay at any point of the game. So, just wanted to recommend that. As we see here, our money is really not getting as far. We need to amp up our income. And there's one decent way that, we're, uh, that we can do there. We could export cut stone. Cut stone is a really valuable good. And since we got these massive dep deposits of stone in here, it will be no issue to sell off a couple of the stones that are just lying around here instead of using them as a construction material. You see, there is really plenty of stone here available, and we could sell off some of that to afford the ore before we are able to just set this up as a constant economy, where we're cutting stones out of here, out of the quarry, refine them there, up there, and export them then as a profitable thing. So for now, I think I'm going to work with uh, temporary resources here because we really got nice amounts of stone deposits here, as, I, as you can clearly see. Every city needs to find its own economy and its own backbone. And this game features a lot of different work, uh, ways of earning your money. That was the reason why I mentioned the slavery in the first place of this episode. Because this is, as a matter of fact, also a valid option that you can go for if it's uh, tickling your... Uh, it's if scratching your itch. I'm personally more like the... I'm more like a crafting person, but... That's uh, a matter of taste, I'd say. Alright, we need to keep the, the wood coming. As you see here, we're uh, running out of wood. But also noticeable, we're gaining more migrants. Those extra services that I plucked on in here, they're getting us somewhere. It's always the same. We could also set up a well over there, so let's do this too. Setting up those little things in terms of um, service gets you far. This stops the stagnation of immigrants early on quite well, too. Although, you can't resolve all of your problems with that. At some point, you always will need to rely on new tech. And you won't be getting it done without. It's just as it is. Sadly. But those little things can carry you quite far. So. We cut the masonry all almost done. And that's going to be a real nice step forward for us. The second library is also done. So now we are going to see a steep increase of research points. And the bathhouses, well, it's, it sounds a little bit weird to skip on the tavern and the nursery. 
I honestly don't know why these buildings are in between. The thing about the tavern is a tavern without alcohol is just not no fun for the people. And in the nursery, I personally think growing your own babies in the city is something that is right now not that important. But the bathhouses, they will give us an instant bump up in terms of living quality and people will love the new service there and we'll see a huge migrational bump for us there. So let's not forget to set up five crates for the cut stone. And here's now the tricky question. Do I want to set up another export to boat? Or do I want to swap on over to some other thing? So as you see here, cut stone is quite pricey. Leather is also a quite pricey good. Quite surprisingly, as a matter of fact. Fabric is not. Fabric is really a bad export option. But furniture is just as valuable as leather. So metal has a price of five each and yeah well we're not going to be able to export any of these things that well so i'd say we're going to open up another export depot we need as many income sources as possible and it'd be a, it'd be a waste of an opportunity to um, not go for like that Of course, we will reserve ourselves a premium stash of these uh, goods for ourselves. Masonry is a slow pro is a slow um, working um, thing too. They basically don't work faster than the carpenters, so don't get your hopes too high. Our income will suck, but it's still better than nothing. So we're going to sell, and we're above one hundred items. That's a nice amount for us to start with. And since we got the necessary odd jobbers right now, I'm going to set up a lot of these people for this job so we can rely a little bit more on these. Okay, so far so good. The only thing that's now not working as I wanted to is our import of ore. As you see here, we're certainly not getting the ball rolling here so far. So we're going to get on... We could export coal, but... With a price of one, this is hardly a, a good business. We might as well export wood. Because honestly, why invest extra work into something that we can't export for the same price? Nah. Not really a good uh, thing to go for, but as you see here, it's a quite slow work, but we're going to go for it anyways. So I was just waiting for the research points to allocate here. And it's a quite nice thing that we have the tavern unlocked already for the next time. And let's set on a bathhouse. We're going to set this up here add or well, more into this direction and as you see here this is where things get costly metal cut stone stone wood here we have to bleed some serious coin but that's okay alrighty oops lost the wrong button I want it doors so let's see how many baths we can get in there so the costs are getting to a absolute crazy amount here already so let's keep it in a in a in a reasonable area there See, we don't need more than that. Like I mentioned before, we can't always expand on these later down the road. Ah, it was just so damn costly because we uh, 
We were overstretching the boundaries of the building. Okay. Then we can, of course, go for a tad bit more here. Let's add in some more basins there. Okay. I was wondering already. I had this, uh... That's more like I had it in my memory. So, here we go. Good enough. Oh, it's a wooden one. Yeah, whatever. Let's let's take it like that. <laughs> All right. So this one won't be completed by the end of this episode. There's uh, this will go. This will take a, a some time until the mason masons have cut all that stone, and therefore. We're going to finish that, I suppose, on the next episode. The next episode will be then focus. We're be we're we're going to focus ourselves then into the alcohol production. I mean, it is not really anything new in that regard, but I'm going to feature all the other buildings that are uh, related to that, and we're going to set up the industry. There's as usual a couple of things that are worth mentioning in between. I am also considering to uh, change up some things in terms of logistics, maybe store the cotton there. So that's the rough, uh, the rough plan for the next episode. I want to finish that bathhouse in the beginning of the next episode so you can see the migrational pull of, these ba of this baddie here. Because this thing really, really does a lot for us. We'll get most of our workers for the next episode out of that. I bet. Anywho, I thank you guys so much for watching. Drop me your comments down below. Leave me a thumbs up if you enjoyed. And I hope you're going to tune in the next time when we're going to make our people drunk for good. See you there, and have a good one.